Ephesians 6, 10 through 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The devil is the arch enemy of believers. He seeks to rob believers of their covenant rights in God and put them into bondage. The devil is relentless in seeing that his plans against believers are actualized. Therefore, believers also need to be armed at all times and be resolute against him whenever he surfaces. In Luke 4.13, the Bible gave us the aftermath of the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness by the devil. And when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a season. The devil will never at any time leave a believer and not return to him. After every victory against the devil, he will depart for a season in order to reinforce and return again. So I can therefore safely say that you are in one of these three places. You are either heading to a battle with the enemy, or you are currently in a battle with the enemy, or you are coming out of a battle with the enemy. Now I want to encourage you today and let you know you can fight and win every time against him because we as believers fight from a place of victory because of what our Lord and Savior did on the cross. We can keep defeating the devil every time he shows up. His strategies are still the same. When we put on the strength of God and his armor, we are guarded at all times against the wiles and the assaults of the devil. Here are five strategic ways to fight the devil and win every time. Ephesians 6, 17, defend yourself with the word of God and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is regarded as the sword of the spirit, which is one of our defensive weapons against the devil. However, believers are not expected to just have God's word as head knowledge. They must also know the best way to appropriate it. This is because the devil equally knows the scriptures and will always try to maneuver us with it. The Bible admonishes us in Colossians 3.16 to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly in all wisdom. This implies that we must be worded and not just that alone. We must also possess the wisdom for its right application. At the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness, the devil fought Jesus with what was written, and Jesus countered him with what was written too. That was wisdom in display. So you can always win your fight with the devil on the platform of God's written word. Consecutively, the devil tempted Jesus three times, but Jesus didn't change the strategy for defeating him. At each attempt, the counterattack was, it is written. The Word of God can also be used as a means of encouraging yourself in the Lord. There is a video I saw, and it spoke about the importance of encouraging yourself and not waiting around for people to do it for you. It said, God did not bring you through all the hell you've been through to leave you right here. Tell yourself, Isaiah 54, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Tell yourself, Deuteronomy 28, I am the head and not the tail. Tell yourself, Psalm 18, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Tell yourself, Psalm 20, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord. Tell yourself, Romans 8:37. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Tell yourself, Romans 8.37. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Tell yourself, Romans 
If God is for me, who can be against me? Tell yourself Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Tell yourself Matthew 17.20, our faith can move mountains. Tell yourself Job 13, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That is the truth. In whatever fight you are going through right now, you have to encourage yourself, just like David did. David didn't look to anyone else to encourage him. David encouraged himself. Keep fighting. The Bible says, resist the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Don't give up too easy. Don't lay down. A lot of people fail, not because they don't love God, not because they don't love the Bible, not because they don't pray, but simply because they don't fight back. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, pray and I'll make the devil run from you. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, get filled with the Holy Spirit and the devil won't bother you. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, get busy winning souls for Christ and the devil will never bother you. But the Bible did say, resist the devil and he will flee from you. We spend a lot of time praying to the Lord, help me out, I'm in trouble. And he didn't say pray and the devil will run. He said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Stand your ground in Jesus' name. Don't let the devil push you around. There are no shortcuts to this. You have to resist the devil. You have the example to follow in Matthew chapter 4. Look at the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What did he do when he came face to face with the devil? The second way is when we administer the blood of Jesus. Revelation 12, 11 through 12. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. One of the ways which the devil fights against believers is to accuse them before God by presenting their sin and guilt to him. The devil knows that God does not tolerate sin and that his righteous nature condemns sin. So he accuses the believers before God so that he will by himself judge his own people. But praise God, we have the blood of Jesus, which cleanses us from all guilt as a testimony against the devil. Sometimes the devil tries to shut believers up from praying to claim the blessings of God by reminding them of their past sins. By presenting the blood of Jesus, we put the devil to shame, showing him the full price for our atonement, the blood. Moving on to fear. Fear is an instrument of the devil against the children of God. This is one of his main tactics and methods. When the devil attacks us with fear, in 1 Peter 5, 8, the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The Bible didn't tell us that the devil is a lion, but that he is like a lion that roars. The devil knows that with faith in God, we can always overcome him. That is why he always, first of all, tries to cripple our faith by instilling fear in our hearts so that we can lose connection with God. The Bible reassures us that 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, we must not give room for fear in our fight with the devil. He is already a defeated foe. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Moving on to casting down imaginations. 
2 Corinthians 10, 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The devil is strategic in attacking believers by implanting evil thoughts in their hearts. When the devil is able to get us obsessed with evil thoughts in our hearts, he can maneuver us as he like. That is why we must guard our hearts by casting down evil imaginations and subjecting them to the Lordship of Christ. We also need to renew our minds with the Word of God. We must not allow the devil to pollute our hearts. A polluted heart becomes a doorway for the attack of the enemy. Philippians 4, 8 Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Finally, resist the devil. James 4, 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Although no one can beat the devil based on his own strength, however, believers who are submitted to God have the authority to resist the devil. The devil can never defeat a man that is submitted to God because God himself will lead his fight. When we are submitted to God, we can defeat the enemy because Jesus Christ has already defeated the devil and put him to open shame all we have to do is maintain the victory Christ won for us. As believers, we are not fighting for victory. We are rather fighting in victory. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, not only defeated the devil, but he had a triumphant procession to display the devil to the universe as a totally conquered foe. He has disarmed him and triumphed over all the forces of evil precisely in his sacrificial death on the cross. As John Calvin put it, there is no tribunal so magnificent, no throne so stately, no show of triumph so distinguished, no chariot so elevated as the gibbet on which Christ has subdued death and the devil, the prince of death. Satan should never terrify us again. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. 2 Timothy 2, 1-4 The life that Christians have taken on seems to be a constant battle. There is the battle that occurs internally, the inner war within the mind. We fight to keep our minds stayed on Jesus within the mind. We have the law of the flesh waging war against the law of the spirit. Then there is the war that we fight against principalities, powers, and rulers of wickedness in high places. Everywhere we turn on this journey of faith, we are forced to fight. We cannot afford to sit back and just take what the devil brings our way. We have a right to live under the blessings and favor of God, and the enemy will always try to thwart that. We must be determined to stand up and hold our ground. Let us stand like soldiers and fight. Are you ready to fight? Well, ready or not, the battle is on. Ephesians 6.10 
through 20 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Stand up, shake off your shoulders, Shine your breastplate, polish your shoes, tighten your belt, fix your helmet, take up your shield and sharpen your sword. The war is on and you are in it once you are a Christian. Christian soldiers, the war is on. We will get wounded. We will suffer bruises. But God is with us during these battles and we can trust that he will never allow the enemy to triumph. Do not get entangled. We have to ensure that we keep alert. We must not get distracted by things that do not pertain to our fight. We must always be ready to give a defense of the faith. A distracted soldier is of no benefit to the battle. In fact, if we become distracted, we are more of a liability. Some people are depending on us in the battle. They expect us to be praying for them, interceding for them, covering them with the blood of Jesus and welding the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God on their behalf. If we are distracted, we are leaving them and ourselves exposed. Satan, will use all his schemes to get our attention away from what is essential. God wants us to stand up and fight, but too often we are lying down and surrendering to our desires. We must keep the focus on the task ahead and not lose our battle stance. Our commanding officer is Jesus Christ. He showed us the perfect way to fight this battle. The victory is already won. But we must be obedient to the commanding officer. Satan will come at us wanting us to obey the desires of our natural body. We cannot become distracted by that. Like Jesus, we must declare it is written. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4, the word of God is the perfect sword that we need in the battle against the enemy. The devil is not an easy opponent. When we use the word of God, we can expect him to try even harder. He did this in Jesus' case. He used scripture in trying to get Jesus to turn away from his purpose. Satan will do this as well when he comes against us. He will twist the Bible if it accomplishes his purpose to defeat us. We must never back down. The word of God spoken from the mouth of a spirit-filled person is sharp and quick. Jesus' response to the devil was the same as before. It is also written. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. 
When we hear anything that tries to hit us off course, our only weapon is the word of God. Our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty for the pulling down of the kingdom of darkness. I said it before and I will say it again. The word is our weapon. Speak the word, pray the word, use the word. Since food and natural things didn't affect Jesus' mission, the enemy tried to appeal to the word. When that didn't work, he went to worship. Anything that pulls us to shift our praise, worship, and thanksgiving to anything or anyone other than God is demonic. It is important to know that the commander and chief of our army, who is also our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, needs to always be central in our mission. This is how we please him. If we move him from the center of our focus in the battle, we would have already lost the fight. Even when the devil played his final card. Jesus' response was the same. It is written. Listen, my friends, we cannot fight the battle as good Christian soldiers if we do not know the word of God. Paul commands his spiritual son, Timothy, to study to show himself approved. This is an act of sharpening our swords of the spirit. We must be willing to say it is written and point to the word of God when the battle intensifies. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Every rebuke of the devil is only as effective as the word we use to rebuke him. Why is this so? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Our faith to rebuke the devil is built on the level of faith we have, having heard the word. When the enemy tries to come in and wreck our families, we must stand against him with the word. It is written. When he tries to take away our joy and peace, it is written. When he tries to make us worry about money, food, and clothing, it is written. Anything the enemy throws at us can be rebuked with the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So that in the end, we may say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Second Timothy 4, 7.